Thank you for, for attending our panel. Uh, we're going to talk about how to build a personal brand in Web3, how to build a established brand, because they're very much interlinked. And uh, today I have with me um, Charlotte Payne from Zebu Digital and uh, Lauren Ingram, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, Lauren Ingram from Women of Web3. <laughs> Please uh, give them a round of applause. So our, uh, the rest of our panelists are stuck in traffic, as typical on a, on a rainy London day. <laughs> um, I think uh, it would be great for each of you to say a few words about your work. Um, and in our previous interactions, just mention if you um, have built a personal brand before, if you're focused more on B2B, B2C, and your role in the industry. It would be great to find out. Um, I'm Lauren, so I run Women of Web3, which is a community, and uh, I also consult in the Web3 space, helping Web2 brands enter the Web3 space, uh, all entering the metaverse, as um, it often gets um, assumed to be in Web2. Um, my background is, I've worked my way up through marketing, usually brand marketing, um, either in tech companies or in ad agencies, so I was head of marketing for a digital agency um, before going to Meta when it was called Facebook, um, where I worked in the brand marketing team, uh, sorry, the business marketing team, which is essentially brand marketing, uh, running their program called She Means Business, helping female entrepreneurs. I'm making this a little bit long, sorry, but it, it was relevant, which is that I wanted to sort of take those elements of helping women and then apply that in a Web3 space because um, it generally is quite uh, male dominated and it would be great to see uh, more diversity. That's my background. Um, and I'm sure also a little bit of personal branding as well that I um, have also helped uh, women in Web3 and also in broader tech with their own personal branding. Super. Charlotte. Great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Charlotte, and I am the design lead at Zebu Digital. Um, so, ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so I'm a trained designer. Um, that's my, my original training, and I've spent the last seven years building and creating... Um, not Web3 brands, but um, more traditional branding, FMCG branding. I've been with Mars working on M&Ms and Snickers and Twix. So a year ago, I took the jump into joining the Zebu um, digital team and their mission um, to bring great marketing and design to Web3. And so I had to kind of retrain <laughs> my design brain a little bit to jump into a completely different field. Um, but it's been super rewarding and it's a lot of fun. Um, so that is um, a bit about my background. And so for those of you who don't know much about Zebu Digital, it's a marketing and design agency specializing in Web3. And so we work for, with uh, B2C, B2B clients, um, NFT projects. So we get a real good spectrum of lots going on. And of course, you're witnessing Zebu Live, uh, another one of our projects. And this is, you know, totally about, this brand is totally about bringing all that Zebu does to you guys and um, making a bit of a like a celebrate, ce <laughs> <I'm trying to> <laughs> say, <laughs> celebrate everything we do at Zebu and um, what's going on in the space. This all of this design is yours, right? It is. Yeah. And it's it's a, it's a pleasure to be standing in front of it and seeing you all guys interact with it over the the next few days and shout out to the the design team and Henry who leads that. So, yeah, well done. <laughs> Super. I see, we have uh, Stefania joining us. Hi, sorry everyone, I'm running late. It's the circle line is just a nightmare. <laughs> but uh, we were just introducing ourselves, sure. so you're right on time. Great, so it's great to be here. So my name is Stefania Steffi. For uh, uh, who knows me, I'm also the Financial Fox. I have a YouTube channel where I interview a project about crypto. And I've been in the space for quite some time. So I run a PR company uh, focused on financial market. And then in 2017, I pivoted into crypto and I just went down to the rabbit hole and I loved it. And so I started to get involved with um, NFT, DeFi, and uh, Web3. I'm an X model, so um, I kind of kept my relationship with fashion brand. And kind of like a year and a half ago, I got everybody asked me, oh, what's crypto? What's NFT? Should we do something? I was like a bit crazy. So um, at that stage, I started to think, OK, I'm going to help them with some Web3 strategy. And I'm doing some interesting work with uh, IUHK, which is the company that built the Cardano blockchain. Um, they didn't only build the Cardano blockchain. They've got some very interesting solution, especially uh, 
uh, for when it comes to uh, digital identity, you know, all the work they've been doing in Africa. And we are working on some interesting uh, way that we can actually uh, create verifiable NFT and also KYC. Uh, and that is obviously for fashion and for brand, that is a very interesting area because of avatars and because, uh, you know, fashion is all about identity. So I hope that I can share a little bit more about what we are doing in this panel. Great, thank you. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we'll talk a bit about building a personal brand and then we'll move to um, establishing a, a Web3 brand because I think these two are interconnected. And the reason is people want to follow leaders. So people want to know who's behind the company, who's the image of the company, and that's why today it's fairly hard to build a project without being the front person running it and being out there speaking about it, doing conferences, presentations, and essentially having people interact with you as the image of that company. Um, many years ago, before crypto, I helped about 30,000 people actually become self-employed. And one of the things that I, would, I did in my workshops was to open them saying, if you don't talk about yourself, others will. And I would like to open uh, with the statement and talk about the importance of building a personal brand. Um, and I know Stefania has done a lot of work in this area. Maybe you could start with you know, some tips and advice on how to establish a personal brand um, from Web 2 to Web 3, obviously. Sure, so I think everything is about brand. I mean, we know Dogecoin is a brand even. Uh, but uh, when, uh, when you talk about Web 3, Everybody is kind of, there is a lot about community and there is a lot about uh, the next generation of influencers. So I think and, and as we go also further, e-commerce has become all about personalization, how to customize product uh, and uh, keeping in mind what are the, pe the preference of the consumers. So uh, when you are building a brand in Web3, I think... All it comes down to identity. So what are your core value? What actually is the audience that you are trying to sell? So I think the main aspect is kind of understand what are the value, what are their characteristics, what is your mission? So everything about identity. And I think that's a really good place to start. And then, and then you have to think about what do I want to achieve? What is my mission and where I want to get to? And that's so you build kind of like a strategy that is not just about going out and promoting your branding, but is actually structuring a plan that helps you, for instance, to grow your customer base, to grow your followers on social media, for example, and to kind of create value and create that community. Because if you only have your identity or your brand, but you don't have a strategy, then you are not going to be able to implement the growth that everybody wants. You know, everybody wants to have more followers on Instagram. Everybody wants, you know, to kind of uh, get out there. And you only get there if you prepare yourself and if you have a strategy. That it might take even some time. It can't be like a, you know, couple of months strategy. I mean, I see Bram thinking actually three to five years. And even if you are trying to achieve that on social media, you shouldn't think about oh, one or two months. No. And then think about the resources that you have and deploy them accordingly. Because, you know, funding is obviously something that you need. You need money. Uh, nothing is free in the city of London or everywhere. And, um, yeah, you need to kind of uh, also keep in mind in your strategy the resources that you have got available. Lauren, if you could tell us about how a woman can build a Web3 brand without just relying on the fact that we don't have enough women in Web3. <laughs> And to be honest, I, I do p partly use that as my starting point, um, is, is like the, the women piece genu genuinely. Um, actually, if you don't mind, I'll, I wanted to speak briefly about LinkedIn, just because I feel like it, it feels quite important in Web3 in terms of pe people building their own brand, you know, their, their personal brand. It feels like the sort of natural starting point now. If, if maybe if it was Twitter before um, and sitting behind PFPs, it feels like increasingly lots of people are uh, yeah, doxing themselves and sharing things on LinkedIn. And it feels like a good opportunity to... Uh, sort of create and own your niche and so people know what to come come to you for like what what are you going to be speaking about on LinkedIn and on other channels but I would just probably use that as your starting point um, and also I'd say keep it simple you see a lot of headlines that it looks like people are sort of SEO keyword stuffing 
Um, <clears throat> and so what, lots of people, when they add me on LinkedIn, making myself sound like I'm really popular, I just mean it's very noisy in Web3 on LinkedIn. And when people add me, and I just I, I don't know what you do because you're, you're sort of trying too hard to add in, you know, either it's like a long sentence about what you offer um, in sort of full prose or, yeah, just, just trying to add in every award company you've ever worked in, in like, and sort of fill the entire headline. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's better to sort of keep it simple and just name your sort of position, current company, and then like maximum one other thing that's interesting about you. Like there's quite a lot of, feels like there's lots of Forbes 30 under 30 in the Web3 space as well as in founders. Um, so, I mean, to be honest, the, the women piece is what I end up talking about on uh, <clears throat> LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera. But I think people like to know that that's what they can expect from me is sort of highlighting and spotlighting other women in the space um, and also... Uh, I, would, I would hope to eventually drive real change in terms of things like uh, parental leave, transparency, and things like that. So again, people know to look to me or to women of Web3 for that. Charlotte? Yeah. Can I just add some, some other observations, I guess? And firstly, like one of my first observations when I got into the space was how great, actually, personal branding is. And actually, I'm sure <laughs> you've all been influencing that because I know you all have great personal brands and, and the advice you gave there is, is fantastic. Um, it's, it's exactly to your point. Like, it's as if pers like the founders of projects or people who've got really strong personal brands in the space have really fine-tuned what they want to stand for, what their purpose is, why they believe their voice should be heard, and they've got like really great clarity on those values, on those principles. And I guess because it embodies what they believe... It come, they're really strong and they're standing out really good. They're best in class, I think, in Web3 personal brands at the moment. If you, if you, the ones are standing out. I know it's getting more cluttered as we get on, but um, I think it's super impressive. And actually, I, mean, I guess my big message is, I think we, when, we, when it comes to our project branding, we need to do the same thinking. We need to be doing that diligence to be like, okay, so what is our purpose? Why are we doing this? What is it about? Not just pushing a technology is it's that thinking you do when you when you're sitting there like oh what should my linkedin be like um it's that kind of thinking that i think we need to encourage more um project owners whether you've got a small small brand or a big brand um to be doing that thinking and are you able to answer those questions are you able to say what your purpose is what your vision is why you, why you've got a voice what your values are um and if you can't answer that do a bit more to work on that brilliant well, there's, there's many ways to build, you know, there's many ways to make money, but only one way to build a reputation. <laughs> um, and we're noticing that a lot of these um, uh, people reflect with, and, and they actually engage with the idea of being part of a small community, like an NFT community, and then showcasing, you know, their NFT um, as part of their, their, their brand persona. Um, and, and instead of going for, for quantity, which is, hundreds of thousands of followers, they go for quality, which is, I'm one of the 10,000 people that are part of this exclusive club. And I wanna talk about a bit about um, PFPs and NFTs and how they, they shift a bit from um, me as a person to me as a member of the community. And um, you know, they, they don't necessarily ask you to reveal your identity, your personal identifiable uh, information out there. But instead, you can be um, pseudonymous. You can be um, just, just a member of the community that has something to say. I think that's a great point because there has been always a misconception about what is an NFT. Everybody thinks it's a picture, but it's not. An NFT is a pair of key that allows you to enter in a specific community. And that is basically the difference. It's kind of like giving you access to something that otherwise you wouldn't have if you're not a member of that club. So that's the way that I see NFT has always been, an NFT has always been a key, but obviously at the beginning, I think, you know, with the word ape and we kind of like all this hype in different kind of NFT, they were just, uh, you know, picture people thought there was, you know, something cool to show that, but it's not about, um, yeah, it's not about who you are, it's what actually you are part of. So it's still part of your identity. Uh, but it is uh, kind of like only one aspect. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting, especially um, what some fashion brands are doing. For example, uh, I think Dolce Gabbana is doing some very interesting things in the space. And they have got a strategy, so, which is quite good. Lauren? Oh. <laughs> um, I do think the anonymity thing is, is an interesting point, partly what I was saying about the move towards doxing in founders. 
um, it does feel like an exciting opportunity that people can sit behind um, this anonymous, uh, yeah, whether it's a sort of PFP or um, being a sort of one of many part of that community in a, in a good way. It's, a, it's also protection because we, we, we get judged, obviously. We, the first, first impression, how we look, yeah. uh, you know, what we're wearing. <laughs> there was something that I felt a bit, I guess, sort of almost like nervous of as a, as a woman entering the Web3 space is I was, um, like, uh, when I first started because operating in it, I decided to dox myself immediately because I was honestly trying for so long to decide, okay, am I going to be anonymous? And in which case, how do I maintain my anonymity? And if, if not, what am I going to say about myself? And like, what is my sort of Web3 self? Um, and for me personally, I felt like I didn't know how to maintain the anim anonymity sort of indefinitely. And I was concerned about the idea of uh, somebody else taking my anonymity away. Um, and I felt sort of... I felt like I had more to lose as a woman um, uh, somehow, um, and uh, so that, that was that was my route was to to just be my exact self, my I almost like my Web two self, but sort of a you know, only slightly changed for Web three. But, but I do also think it is an exciting opportunity being able to um, uh, to have have that anonymity and, and not have quite the same accountability as say your LinkedIn, which literally has like your whole work history, what university you went to, like your whole life story. Um, so it, yeah, it's an exciting moment. Charlotte? Uh, just a small thing to add, and I think it's, you know, in this digital age, there's so many platforms. So I think another reason it's so good in the space is because everyone's had to actually work a bit harder to control their narrative um, and be more involved in how that is, shows up in, across the multiple platforms that now get um, set up. So I think that's one of the reasons it's also being developed. But I think anonymity doesn't want to kind of take away from responsibility. Because, uh, I mean, anonymity is great or can be great for some aspect of your identity that you don't want to, you, you know, you don't want to let other people know. But at the same time, you have to kind of share some credentials in order to prove something or be part of something. So it's kind of like interesting. It comes, all it comes down to identity, I think, and where, you know, we are going to get at some point. It's a very, um, it's kind of like a really new area. Well, remember, the, the web is an archive, so it never forgets. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, um, it, it could be really life-changing in a positive or negative way to say something at one point and just have that pinned to you for the entirety of your career. So anonymity is fairly important, and we, we're, we're building the open web, right? So we want open ledgers, open web, open conversations and opportunities to say things without fearing the repercussion. Um, let's move a bit uh, towards uh, Web3 brands. And because um, we, we talked about NFTs, we talked about, you know, the, the person representing the brand. Social tokens obviously play an important role. But I want to talk a bit about um, the advertising model uh, that is really pinning down companies in Web2 to spend continuous amounts of money without necessarily being able to target specific people based on their interests uh, and without really reflecting what the actual brand stands for. So it's very hard to establish a Web3 web brand following the, the Web2 tactics. And that's where I think the metaverse comes in with um, different types of advertising models. So I want to talk a bit about how brands can move from Web2 to Web3 what is the opportunity for them? Uh, how they can establish their Web3 brand? What reflects, you know, a strong Web3 brand? So I think um, going to Web3 for brands is um, kind of... Um, they have to do in order to survive because uh, the next generation of customers is going to be the next generation, right? Everybody is into gaming and they kind of embrace crypto like they were native people. So. They kind of have to do that, and then they can do it in different ways. But when, uh, when you are asking, Roxana, how people can actually change um, some of the Web 2 strategy to become Web 3, one of the things that I've been discussing with brands, which is quite interesting, is about all these influencers model, right? So where nowadays some fashion brand just pay for an influencer, give free clothes and everything to kind of promote their brand. And uh, sometimes, you know, you, if you are uh, somebody that buys stuff from that brand, you think, why that influencer is promoting the brand? She doesn't have even a clue. She doesn't even like the brand. But she's get free clothes. I want to free clothes, right? 
And uh, so I think that's a very great opportunity because uh, you can actually change the influencer model to make it more like community-based. So actually you're gonna reward the community, so your user, the people that buy your stuff to become influencers. So I'm, I'm, I'm really a firm believer that influencer model that we know right now, which I really dislike myself, is, is gonna change and is gonna empower Everybody that buys from the brand, you know, they can buy in the metaverse, for example. And I think the metaverse can be a great way to disrupt this influencer model and empower, you know, everybody that buy from the brand does, to become an influencer. And I'll just I'll build on that because, um, and you mentioned it about the community, using those influencers as a community. And I think one of the big differences I see is from Web 2 and Web 3, and the opportunity I see is, um, lots of Web3 projects have a community before they have a logo. Um, and it was just mentioned in the, in the panel before, actually, I just want to echo it because it's so important, Desi over there. Um, and so they don't have that. And what they do have is a small group of people. And the panel before talked wonderfully about user experience and user research as well, something that I think we're skipping over. Not only are we missing design out too far in the process when we're building these brands but and building these projects and generally in using design correctly to help us here. Um, but yeah, it's that kind of upfront stage where we can really influence like how design can influence um, these spaces. And, and the best, what my, my point I started with saying is use that community to help you build the brand. Co-create your brand with that small community. It'll help you evolve it. It'll help you stay relevant. It'll help you not just talk to yourself not just do things that you as a small founding team think are right, but you're including that community. They, they respond well to that. They feel like they're part of that. And that's really fun. These are fun activities I'm talking about. I'm talking about, um, I'm, I'll, I'll use Spark World as an example, talk to them about you know, creating a character or a mascot that could really help um, better talk to their community on a more casual way and ac across social. So we, we opened it up to that community, asked them, what, who is this character, what could it be? So there's fun ways of including people yeah, and using that community to design. It's kind of the same things that start with airdrop. You know, we have done it already in crypto. We are uh, not paying for marketing, but we are getting our community to kind of do the marketing for us. And I think probably company web too should think about doing that in different way. Uh, yeah, I would um, agree with all of that. And um, actually, when you said that, that reminded me, I saw someone on my way here, he was carrying just a Nike bag, like a you know, sort of brown paper bag, and it said, download the Nike app. And, was, and it's like, it's quite literally him having bought, you know, having spent his money on Nike is then instructing everybody else to go and do the same. Um, and we're gonna, uh, we need to sort of do more of that sort of community building and the, like, using the power of the community to sell, um, which, which does already happen in, the, in terms of hype, but actually, we probably need to be sensible about thinking like, how can we add long-term value to a community and then they want to sort of yeah, go forth and, and sell that community elsewhere. Um, and not necessarily as, as explicitly as, please download our app, mm -hmm. but, um, but potentially. And also just briefly on the design point, um, I know it's your job to say we need good design in this, but actually I think we really do need good design in Web3 because um, if we want sort of mainstream adoption of like everybody's sort of startup or company in here, if we want to see the masses using it, we really need to improve the user experience and, and design because I, I speak to a lot of beginners in what I do because I'm sort of trying to help um, women that aren't already in the Web3 space get their head around it and sort of whether they're, and get sort of either working or playing in it. And a lot of them are finding the, yeah, the user experience or the way everything looks or feels really off-putting and often quite confusing. Um, so, you know, when they're signing something with their, you know, signing a transaction with their crypto wallet, and you're like, am I signing my life away? It's, it's not clear what I'm doing. I, I, I don't know where to look to, to find more information or like, how, how does this work? Um, and they're just less with more questions than answers. And, and uh, I'm hoping we can get to a point, even if like in a year or two from now, maybe even less, um, that it might be just a bit less uh, confusing to navigate and more of a sort of lovely experience. Mm. And just to build on that, it's, you're making me realize how much harder design has to work as well in Web3 than it d does in Web2, because these brands are like established. Mm -hmm. Their products are really clear. You know exactly what they do. They know, you know what the, how they impact your life. They, you, know, you, you understand the experience they offer you. Whereas in Web3, people are changing their strategy and product and service on a weekly, monthly basis. And this is what we experience as even. It's, it's a fun design challenge because you almost have to create these brands that are really moldable and flexible and, and not rigid and not constrained by anything and not too 
full of frameworks and that's, systems. That's a, such a good point. Like, I'm thinking about modular rather than kind of like, oh, that's it. That's what I'm going to yes, be. Yeah. That's, that's a very important point, and, I think. And, it's, and sometimes we've had some interesting conversations with clients where we're, you can see their ambitions, you can see their goals and what they see as that for their project in five or ten years, and they're, and they're usually pretty epic and big visions, but like helping them understand what the steps are to get that and what kind of brand you need to support that um, pipeline of innovation. Um, what are some of the stories you can be telling that are not too um, specific and... Um, defined, but allow you to kind of evolve and flex as you go, whether it's a mascot helping you tell the story of your development or whatever it is, there's, there's tricks you can do to make sure you're not pigeonholing holding yourself, spending money on design and realising it's not working for you a month later. It's essentially, yeah, but, innovate or die. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps uh, also, I think one important element just to follow up is like, as you are establishing your run your web tree, think about collaboration and partnership with other brands or with other industry. I think this element of like collaboration uh, with, with other projects, I think is quite strong in web tree as well and can really help a brand, you know, like fashion brand partner with music or art or, and you kind of create something that is multi experience because brand, you know, is going to become, the, the focus is not the product or it's not just the product, but is the experience that you uh, create for your consu consumer, for your well, uh, in, community in the, member. In web three, community is a product, right? So um, I think we need to wrap it up, but <laughs> before we wrap it up, in one sentence, how you would explain to a Web3 uh, Web brand what is the, the meme culture in Web3 and why it is important? Did you say meme? Did you say meme? Meme culture. Yeah. The, so the question is, what is the importance of meme culture? Yeah, how do you explain to a Web3 brand, Web2 brand, the importance of meme culture in Web3? <laughs> and then we wrap it up. One sentence, come on. Oh, one sentence. Um, I, I think Web2 has just churned out a load of stuff and meme culture allows us to have fun whilst we're creating, whilst we're tackling big problems. I'd probably say you just need to, it's important that you go down the rabbit hole before even thinking about going into Web3. I've got it. So I think don't take yourself too seriously. So, because that's all about meme. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's a wrap. Uh, thank you for, for joining our panel.